Hi, Jeff Spira here with you again, and I thought I'd talk to you today about um, flat bottom boats. Uh, I design a lot of flat bottom boats. A lot of my builders are uh, like and build flat bottom boats, but I get an awful lot of questions and an awful lot of naysayers saying they just aren't worth it. Um, I, I get uh, posts every day or emails every day from people who say, you know, I, I want to take it outside in the ocean. And uh, everybody tells me that a flat bottom boat won't do it. Uh, and I get a lot of comments on uh, emails or on uh, videos that I do that say people pound, uh, say that it pounds the crap out of you and that uh, you won't be able to keep your kidneys. It's beating so hard and, you know, all this other stuff. You know, I'd really like to dispel some of those rumors. Um, true, if you take a, you know, a, a John boat out on a, you know, a choppy day in the ocean, you're going to get pounded. So, um, but that's not necessarily the case with all these designs. So I'm going to kind of go into these designs, what they're good for, what they're not so good for, you know, what kind of boating activity do you do that, uh, that would dictate what kind of uh, boat you should build. So, um, so let's, let's talk about flat bottom boats. So, um, there's a, there's a builder and, and boater in Southern California named Bradley, and he's got a, a website called ilovethesea.com. And uh, this is his boat. It's actually a uh, skiff he designed and built himself. It's 19 footer. And he takes it 100 miles offshore. Now, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about in a protected bay. I mean offshore in the North Pacific. So uh, they go, he goes to the Outer Banks, the Cortez Bank, and the uh, some of the Outer Banks, and um, stops at some of the the islands out there. And there's they're big islands out there. The Navy uses several of them. You may have heard of uh, SEAL training on uh, on uh, San Clemente Island. Um, that's one that's about 55 miles out. I used to go there f quite frequently. Um, there's another island out there called San Nicolas that the Navy also uses. They launch missiles off it. And... out in those kinds of waters with his 19 foot flat bottom skiff. Here's a, he, he actually sleeps on it as well. I think he said he spent 480 some days in the last eight or 10 years out there. Um, nights, I'm sorry, sleeping on the boat. Um, and it's a, it's a, he said he can't do that with a V bottom boat. He can't really do the kind of exploring and adventure seeking that he uh, he actually does with his boat. Flat bottom boats have more static stability than they do dynamic stability. And what that means is if you are interested in going very fast offshore in rough water like these uh, boat racers here. These guys are turning very good speed. They're doing 75 miles an hour. 80 miles an hour in huge, huge seas out here. I don't estimate their size. Depending upon whether you're an old salt or not, it's anywhere from four to eight. Um, you want a V-bottom boat. If you're not, if you just want to cruise around and maybe do something that's more static oriented, like fishing you know, or trolling or uh, stopping and diving or... Uh, going out and playing with your kids, um, a flat bottom boat is going to be more stable than a V-bottom boat. So the reason that they use flat bottom boats, for instance, in, uh, uh, in river, rapid river travel, you know, where, where uh, uh, white water, big heavy white water is going on, is because they're more stable. They, they, they are more stable. They will keep you aboard. So if you want to take your, your kids and your 90 pound dog and, and go out there and go fishing and have the dog running from side to side and the kids playing and jumping around, um, you can't do that on a V-bottom boat. Uh, the boat's going to tip 
and and it will become very you know unstable very more difficult to use but a flat bottom boat will stay still when when that's happening now when you get a flat bottom boat up on a plane um you know look you saw bradley's going there on a on some choppy water out at the islands uh you know they will uh they will ride a little rougher than a v bottom boat uh, if they're correctly designed, like the Pacific Power Dories, uh, where they've got an upturned bow, they will ride up and over the, the chop and swell. It's not going to be a big pounding that's going to take your, your kidneys out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a rougher ride. Trust me, it will be a rougher ride. So, um, But it's perfectly acceptable to just back down a little bit. You know, instead of going 40 knots, you know, crank it back and go 15 or 18. bottom boat can't be launched off the beach and go through uh, rough waves to get out to sea. Um, you know, most of my customers in, in uh, Oregon and Washington and Alaska and British Columbia and, and uh, Vancouver Island, uh, which is the Pacific Northwest, uh, they want flat bottom boats because they're more stable when they're trolling for, for salmon or, or you know, heading out to catch halibut and they got to hang over the side, bring a 150 pound fish over the side. Um, that's, that's the, that's the secret. And that's why those people for ocean use all use flat bottom boats. Um, you know, I get, I get a lot of people from the Gulf coast and from uh, the Southeast that uh, say, Oh, you know, my friend said, you can't take a flat bottom boat out to the sea. They just, they won't handle it. Well, Guess what? They do. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to talk about some of my designs here and um, that that you can build that are that are flat bottom. And then in another video, I'm going to talk about some of my V bottom boats and and uh, what what useful, you know, means they have of, of, of keeping track of things. So. Anyway, we're going to start with Grand Bank stories. Uh, these were officially, uh, originally used by offshore fishermen um, in the Grand Banks, <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> which is uh, which is off the coast of Nova Scotia and uh, and and the Canadian Maritimes, and um, it's where where uh, all the cod fishing was done, and that was from the time America was discovered really uh, or even before Columbus arrived there was there's a lot of talk that that uh, different people uh, fished the Grand Banks they came here and, and because it was uh, it was a prime commodity the fish would keep well they would salt them and dry them and, and uh, uh, any anyway in the early years before motors came around uh, schooners would would leave the shores of uh, of the New England and, uh, and and the Canadian Maritimes, and they would stack dories in there, and they would uh, um, sail offshore, and they'd spend three or four months uh, out in the Grand Banks, and they'd drop the dories off every morning, and the fishermen would fish with their set lines and and uh, all that, and and catch fish, and then bring them back to the to the schooner where they would. They would pull them up and put them on deck for the night, and uh, and then they would uh, clean and salt the fish, and uh, uh, store them away. So they uh, they would you probably heard the term salt cod, and that was uh, what they did with them. So Grand Bank stories were made for that. So they were sailed and they were rowed at the time, and uh, they're they're good, sturdy, uh, reliable, blue water. Uh, uh, fishing boat that uh, that's that's designed to be you know to be uh, you know roughly handled and carry a lot of load and be used offshore now with the advent of uh, motors um, a little bit variation on that dory came around it was called originally it was called a Carolina dory and what they did is they flattened the bottom a little bit so that they would uh, they would get up and plane uh, with a powerful enough motor um, but the motors weren't very reliable then, so they would uh, they would actually have the capacity to sail as well, 
or be road. So they, they are a, they're a displacement type hull that can go up on a plane and also can be rowed quite easily. So uh, the other thing that the Carolina dories would do well is operate in very shallow water. So um, this is one of the designs I use uh, a lot. It's probably my easiest to build design. There have been, I don't know, a thousand of them built in different sizes from 14 feet up to, uh, well, I've got them up to 55 feet, but I, um, I think a 24 is about as, uh, is, is the, is the big end one. Um, and so they, they'll hold a lot of load. Um, and it's, it turns into a great little, uh, sport fishing boat can be used, um, can be used everywhere, uh, from, from bays and lakes and rivers and, and small streams up to, uh, you know, up to offshore. Um, the, again, it's, uh, not something you want to push real hard on, you know, fast going offshore, but it's something that uh, can certainly handle it. You can go out on a nice day, and if, if a blow comes, you can, you know, it's safe enough to get you back home. So, um, again, that's probably one of my easiest to build boats. Uh, it's a great starter boat. A lot of the people who uh, who build boats all over the world, um, you know, it's from, you know, Iceland to to New Zealand, uh, start with a Carolina dory. And of course, all up and down both coasts. Uh, this, this, I've got them in Alaska, uh, all kinds of places. Um, and a, uh, you know, they're very, uh, again, it's a really good starter boat. So that's the Carolina dories. Um, in the Pacific Northwest, uh, there was a, there's another type of boat called a Pacific Power Dory. And this is a dory that um, it kind of, is required to be um, planing to go fast most of the time. So it's really set up. I mean, it can, it obviously can troll and a lot of them are used in that, in that sort of you know, instance. Um, but they were originally designed so that you could beach launch and recover them or um, launch them from, you know, uh, a protected area and uh, maybe run out a river and, um, and, and handle the ocean as well. So uh, they're upturned in the bow, so they tend to ride over the chop and waves. This is kind of like Bradley's boat. It's got an upturned bow, the same sort of way that, uh, that my um, Pacific Power Dories are. I make them in a low-sided version. That's, that's good for, you know, day cruising and that sort of thing. And a, and a higher-sided version for if you're ever out in a big blow that uh, it... Um, it, it protects you from getting too much splash inside the boat. So um, this again is a very popular build of mine. I've got them in, uh, let's see, I think 12 foot to uh, 24, something like that in that range. I can have them in the offshore model as well as the, in the offshore model, they go up to 32 feet. Um, but they also um, in the, uh, uh, you know, they go down to maybe 15 or 17 feet in the in the offshore version, and uh, which has, you know, just higher sides. It's got a self-bailing deck, and it also has, um, it's got a built-in splash well that comes with it. The um, standard side ones uh, are just intended for, um, you know, for bay and, and, uh, and, and you know, occasional offshore use and when it's nice and that sort of thing. Um, and rivers and lakes and you know they use uh, there's a builder that uses his for um, shrimping down in the Gulf um, they're, again they're all used all over the world there's probably been I'm gonna say five or six hundred of these built over the years and uh, and the builders love them they absolutely love them they, they handle all sorts of weather and uh, load and weight and everything so I also designed skiffs. Um, there's a lot of people that really enjoy um, using skiffs uh, from small size up to uh, up to larger ones. Uh, it's a good boat if you want to row it or sail it or or uh, um, just enjoy it uh, with a motor to, to for uh, carry a good load. And it's a, just a good sturdy little you do everything kind of boat. Uh, there are lots of fun. 
Um, I also design flats boats, which are um, which are are, are uh, flat in the in the stern and very low sides, and uh, um, and they they also will carry a lot of motor, so they're they're good. Uh, Good boats for uh, going fast and and for pulling things over the side like alligators, <laughs> uh, things like that. Um, and um, I've got a, I've got a series of those. Um, I also design uh, a boat that's not really a Garvey and it's not really a dory, but it is. I call them Garvey dories, and they are um, uh, square bowed sort of boats. Um, and they're very popular in the, in the, along the Pacific, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Gulf Coast um, because they're extremely sturdy and, and you can handle a lot of motion back and forth if you, if you bow hunt or, or you know, use, use a, a spear to catch, uh, um, you know, a flounder or, uh, or you want to just have a fun boat that's very stable that you can take your kids out on and... Uh, um, that sort of thing. Uh, I, the Garvey Dory is, uh, is, is, is a popular boat, uh, uh, in my lineup. Um, you can also put a, a drop bow on them. That's kind of like, a oh, let's say it's a, uh, landing craft type bow. And, um, these were originally proposed to me to, to put them on there for, for people who had, uh, who had relatives and, uh, who needed uh, uh, wheelchair access so you can run the boat up on the on the beach and roll a wheelchair into it that makes it really easy to load and unload um, people that have limited limited mobility you can also put a um, you know ATV in there if you on a bigger one or a motorcycle if you want you can... another thing that uh, uh, flat bottom boats give you is pretty good economy um, they take the least amount of power of, of any of my boats. Um, you know, a typical 19-foot, uh, let's say, uh, uh, Pacific Power Dory will get up on a nice plane with, with uh, 25 horsepower. And that's with six people aboard. I'm not talking about an ultra-lightly loaded uh, thing. I'm talking about a pretty sturdy boat with, uh, with five or six people aboard will will get up on a nice plane in the low 20s miles an hour range um, with uh, with 25 horses um, the equivalent in a in a v-bottom dory for instance one of my uh, other designs you would need 50 horses and if it was a panga a deep v boat you'd probably need 75 um, for the same size hull so just to let you know that it doesn't take as nearly as much power to run these things, you know. Uh, V-bottom boats take a lot more power, so they're a lot cheaper to run, a lot, uh, uh, you know, more economical to operate. And that's that's where the boat costs really run in, in is not what it costs to build it or, you know, how much the trailer costs or, you know, these kinds of things. It's It's... It's using the boat that that costs you money. So, um, so I, I pay attention to how much power that uh, people suggest that you use on your boat, and remember, you know that my recommended horsepower on on um, on all these boats is surprisingly low. You would be amazed. Um, I've got a video shown in in my group of videos here uh, by a builder. Who built an 18-foot Carolina door, and he has a 9.9 .9 horsepower motor on it. And he and his wife and his daughter are out in it, um, and they're they're in Florida, and uh, on a river, and uh, it's up on a nice plane. I, I would say in the in the low 20s, so miles an hour range. So um, that's what he loves about it. He calls it the Prius of boats. So um, take a look at that video. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, so anyway. Those are some of my options in flat bottom boats, and I hope I've dispelled some of the rumors that you may have heard, or what uh, the old timer down in the down in the dock said to you about ever taking a flat bottom boat offshore or anything else. So, if you have any questions about it, uh, drop me an email. Um, my site, of course, is spiraintернational.com. Um, 
that's the, the site where the information is. And, and uh, like I said, all the all my study prints are free, so by all means, download those. And um, and please, uh, if you're looking at this on YouTube, please um, like and subscribe, and uh, hit the bell so that you you get warned when I put up a new video. And, uh, and advise some of your friends to take a look at this, too, because I'm sure uh, people have given you all kinds of advice if you're at the least unsure about what, uh, what kind of boat to build. So. Well, thank you again for watching.